light source, but of course you can if your picture requires it. Okay, so um, you just want to start shading like this. I'll show you. Okay. Um, really, if you want a more detailed picture, I would go with a smaller brush, uh, brush size. But for me, I'm just going to go with, um, you know, just not big or not small. So, here we go. Okay, you want to move upwards like this. And you want to keep adding vo um, volume or adding more as you go. Because as you can tell, you can't go really far with just one stroke. You have to keep adding. Like so. See? And you, you can also alternate sizes, you know, you don't have to stay with one side. It's really up to you. But since this isn't going to be a very detailed picture, I'm just going with this. And just keep doing that to the rest of the hair, adding strokes. I always like to keep my strokes my strokes close to the lines. See, and areas where it's under the hair, like this. You want to cover the whole thing, well I usually do, like that. Yeah. Sorry. Also, if you don't know the keyboard shortcut, to undo something, you, um, you, you hit uh, control, out and Z. Okay. Right here, I'm going to change the brush size to a little bit smaller. Should add those. See? It's really nice if you add um, alternating strokes because, or various different strokes because it adds a nicer touch. Also, if you have, um, I believe it is. CS2 or CS and higher, you can change the the softness and hardness of the brush. And um, if you can do that, it will the picture usually turns out really nice looking if you alternate between a harder brush and a softer brush when doing the hair. It gives it a really nice touch. So if you have those versions, then you should definitely try it out. See what works best for you. Keep adding that. Also, another thing that I've noticed that gives a really nice effect is if instead of just going from down and up and keep doing that with the rest of the hair, what you can do is you can um, start like at the middle of the hair piece and then um, add strokes up like this. I don't know how to explain it, but you can add strokes from this side and then add strokes on the bottom. And this is a little different. It gives a different touch. See? That. I'll try to do it again out here and see. Also, um, you can really apply this as well to how to explain it. You can start here 
and then um, add more brush strokes here. And this kind of gives a shine effect if you do the whole thing. Kind of like that. And remember, um, change between the sizes if you want a really nice look. Okay, like that. change in between sizes again. <laughs> Alright, we pretty much have most of the head done. I mean, well, right here in the spot, we'll do it quickly. It's a little something. Okay, now that we have most of the head done, what you want to do is either you can leave it like this, or you can add even more detail. And what you do, oh, sorry, my foot is cramped. Well, not cramped, but asleep. Um. What you want to do is you want to choose a darker color. Like I said, I generally go with very dark. So I'll leave this. And you want to get a smaller brush size. Sorry. Okay. Like this, probably. Not too tiny, but pretty small. And you want to add around the lines, like this, and down towards. You want to start in, in the middle, or, I'm sorry, what did I hit? Okay. Like that. It's hard to explain, but you, you probably get the idea. And you know, you don't want to add it everywhere, but just in places, in random spots. Well, not in random spots, but you know, not everywhere. This is very hard for me to explain because normally I just do things by, kind of by instinct. I really don't really have instructions, specific instructions on what I do. Ah, <sighs> computer is acting up again. It's freezing my, my tablet. Let me redo that. Okay. <sighs> it's freezing my tablet. Okay. 